It's staying on this side. Yeah. Yes. It's staying right here. Ireland breeds fighters because of the passion, the hunger and determination that we have been instilled with years and years down the line. Fighting another man can seem brutal. In boxing you need to learn to live in the moment. We all go through dark times. If I hadn't have stood up and admitted that I had problems and that I had issues and I wouldn't be where I am today. The biggest moment of my life fighting Demetrius Andrade for the world middleweight title is just around the corner. This is it, Jason. Like, it's shit or boss time, like. There's many, many fighters with his talent that could not go through the things that he went through, mentally and physically. Big right again, but quickly. He knows what he wants. He's very dedicated. He sacrificed, I think, so much, and there's so much behind the scenes. This is what we want to see. It defied all the odds. Jason is not weak in anything. You just can't catch him up. Jason is a role model to boxing. He was a metal machine. El animal, part of a lion. Punches get flammable, no calm in the rain. We're here now at the Moraine Hotel today and uh, we're just doing a media, like an Irish media press conference thing. So it's just to get everyone together now and uh, to get all the questions, all the interviews done and out of the way and just get me ready then to go into camp and focus solely on taking care of business. Here's the coffee. Thank you. Deadly, deadly, deadly. All right lads, how's the farm? How are we? I'm not the, the young kid now that I was living in the whole excitement of fighting for a world title. Of course, inside I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it. Did I think it would happen as quick? Maybe not. You know, I thought it might have been another fight away, but I'll happily step in and take that shot at his title and bring it back to Ireland. I think he deserves a world title. Uh, he's done enough over the years uh, to get this chance and now it's in his own hands. All of a sudden, there's millions watching you versus thousands. But he's down to earth, he's grounded, and that's the best way to be as an athlete. And he's ready for that, there's no doubt about it. And yes, uh, when he wins the title fight, it'll be lots of zeros uh, watching him and hopefully lots of zeros in, in revenue too. Professional boxing, uh, particularly in the Republic of Ireland, has been dead the last four or five years. We don't have too many world professional champions, males in, all in Ireland, because Katie Taylor has obviously been the trailblazer. So in terms of the sport itself, it's a very important fight. We take uh, Demetrius Andre in, in, in New Hampshire and then we go to Canelo. I'm taking charge of what's important to me in life and that's my family first and foremost and my boxing career and you know boxing's a short sport, it's a short career. I need to give it absolutely everything. These here are lifesavers, everything has to be weighed out and you call them lifesavers. <laughs> <laughs> Weight savers, isn't it? <laughs> But yeah, after this fight, I'm definitely going to get a chicken tikka masala, a pilu rice, a garlic naan, a pompadoms, onion bhaji. I'm so lucky to have April, Sierra, my mother, my two sisters, a great solid group around me, looking after me and, and supporting me and caring for me. I think that's going to be a massive part of my success. Where are we looking there now? Sierra! Is that 50? Jeez, that looks big. Huh? And just take half of it off. 
she, um, she's trying to feed me up. We had went to school together, um, both in the same secondary school, and um, but we weren't together in school. Uh, one of the teenage discos, I think, when we were about 14, we <laughs> may have got together. Yeah, I kissed her there uh, for the first time. I think we were about 15 or 16 at the time. Never spoke to her, never spoke to her after it um, for years. I got a text one time from Jason and he asked, uh, so I hear you want to learn a bit of boxing. I did not want to learn a bit of boxing, but this is his pickup line. And I sent her the most romantic message ever and says, I heard you're looking to learn a bit of boxing, <laughs> which she completely wasn't. <laughs> but um, yeah, I sent her that message and you know, that's, that's really where it all started then, apart from that first kiss when we were, when we were young. Here we are now, <laughs> planning a wedding. Wow. Right here, right, 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 right. We're on our way now over to see uh, my mother. And we're gonna put the feet up, get the kettle on, we cup of tea, a few biscuits, and uh, look back at some old photographs. I'm sure there'll be the odd dodgy one in there of uh, the bowl haircut that I used to have when I was a kid. And <laughs> A few different ones. There's there's one or two that sticks out in my head, but I'll I'll not ruin the surprise right now. Alrighty. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Nice all good. How are you? All good. All good. Not a lot. Just back from training. What's these? I was so young when I had him. I was just gone, 18, when I had Jason, and, and we've always just, I don't know, we just tie so close. I look like an absolute animal, that coat on me. <laughs> it was a bit big, it had to be for a few years. But it's not Walk even that it's big, good. it's just puffy, like, isn't it? Now. Must have been on the way, it's saying. Look at you eating the cake. <laughs> <laughs> I dare it was after I'm way done that morning. <laughs> Championships. <laughs> Well, I grew up in, in Donegal Town, on the main street, in a, in a one-bedroom flat. It wasn't ideal, of course, but we were teenagers like at the time too, so it was just starting off. It does look outside uh, Lamy, the first time I got the new council house. Jesus. Huh? It was like a, getting a castle. It really was, it was so exciting. In the wee box room, I went yeah. up there and had a pot noodle. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All I had was a kettle at the time. First headgear on me. Yeah. <laughs> that was the start of it all, was that? Yeah. that, that was Christmas. Was it Christmas? Uh, uh, I didn't really know my father was a boxer before or anything along those lines, so my father would have uh, went out to the kitchen and started doing a bit of skipping, a bit of sit-ups, and uh, maybe a bit of shadow boxing. And I was the one that was sitting up on the worktop playing the music for him to keep him motivated. I was like the DJ. From a very young age, like even five, six, seven, he had always been kind of interested, I always remember him sitting up yeah, with his father watching boxing and stuff. My father went and got a tattoo in Sligo um, and his tattoo was two boxing gloves and saying champion of Ireland. And uh, I was like, he must have done some sort of boxing at some stage <laughs> or what's going on here? Your dad and Andy Lee. No way. Your dad and Andy Lee. That's when Ireland fought Cuba. Unbelievable. Imagine Adam turned around and said to him, Andy, you're going to be yeah. training me yeah. for when I'm fighting for a world title. Confirmation. Confirmation. Mm. I don't know, we just tie so close. Don't make me cry now, because but it really is a wild, special relationship I have with him. I'm so thankful for him. He's amazing, like, and he's amazing to his two sisters too. Like, I love my mother to bits, like, I really do. And... So very grateful for everything she's done for me. Um, we never really had it easy growing up. Um, we never had it too hard either. But uh, my mother worked as much as she could. Um, my mother has an amazing heart. Um, she's an amazing person, and. She's just uh, 
I love her to bits and I'm so very grateful for, for everything that she's ever done for me in her life. We're just working on an, an arm shoulder circuit there today, just about building that that knockout power, that power you know that's gonna that's gonna make a difference in the fight. He's getting stronger every day. He sees that on himself. Strong. That good, 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 good. I'm preparing to become the best version of me whenever my time arrives on that stage in that ring. But me and Sean really bonded whenever I had the injury in my career and that was, it was a very hard time for me. I broke my hand and I tore my tendon all in the one fight. You know, that was the second round and I had to go 10 rounds in that fight. So that was a real difficult stage for me. Sean kept me right mentally. He kept me coming into the gym here and to keep me ticking over, not letting me get into a really bad place mentally or physically. This is one of those guys, you know, that he continues to keep himself ready all the time. So good lad, good lad. Strong, push him right out, push him right out. No pain, keep it going. Good, good, good. lad. I'm not going in one direction, okay? Right to the top. Last one, keep him strong. Good lad. Ah, good. <laughs> 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 he is a lad that just puts 100% in the every every training session that he goes through. Yes, boy. What's how are you? All good, sir. All good. I think that's all we needed, anyway. So simple, effective, keep the energy high now. Love it, my man. Cheers, sir. I've been through hard times myself. Suffered with a lot of anxiety very, very anxious person. And it really ruined, you know, a lot of my younger life. And I didn't enjoy things the way that I should have. I didn't enjoy life, like I was just too anxious. With Jason, you, you knew you could get on a fast track with him because of his amateur pedigree. He had over 200 amateur fights, so you could take a fast track with Jason. However, there's been some bumps and bruises through the way because obviously he shattered his hand. Many people don't know the severity of how he hurt his hand. It wasn't just a fracture. The young man fought with a shattered hand, torn ligaments, and still where if he would have quit, thrown in the towel in that fight, nobody could have blamed him. He fought on, showed what kind of heart, showed that Irish spirit, and but, but after, when, when, the, when they opened him up and saw how bad it was, I mean, it took one year to come back. I've got to the other side of that now, and of course, that'll always come around. Like, you're never, you're never free of that. Like, there's always gonna be stages in your life that you're gonna come across that again. But I've learned how to deal with it. Um, I understand it now. And I can see now how much I'm enjoying this life, like. We're over here in Markham now, I have an Airbnb, and my purpose of going away is to dial in, to focus, and to get the last bits of preparation as perfect as I possibly can. Today we have probably maybe like four spars left of camp and we'll have two opponents in today, uh, two sparring partners and uh, we'll maybe get like four or five rounds each out of both of them and uh, just, you know, just, just sharpening the tools really. Let's crack. How's that ankles? Yeah. Rough. See, <laughs> you've, you've met the man himself, Johnny Ward, boy. You got the key, yeah? Yeah, got the key, I got the secret. Super middleweight prospect, he's come in very thankfully to spar me for this fight. He's uh, been 
still got me nose, so I'm doing okay. We've got great rounds in so far, so we have. I'll stop when I get to the, you know, to the noon bit. You have to pay a lot of extra now for that kind of footage. <laughs> Quickly, only fans. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, maybe you can do it, just do it, and then if it's good enough, I'll get on only fans. What's going through your head now? It's switching on, getting the zone sort of thing. Um, Cold, that's what's <laughs> I'm thinking, I need better to come quick and get that heating on in there. <laughs> <laughs> Not his best day, not his worst day, and uh, I know what it's like when you're going through a hard training camp. You have ups and downs. Probably can't get much fitter, but he needs, still needs to work on um, the strategy, the things that are going to win him the fight. I have spanned a lot of good fighters uh, away from my career: Biddy Joe, Saunders, uh, Chris Shubank Jr., Callum Smith, James Agale, and I, I rate Jason could be very, very, very highly, and he'll definitely be a world champion. Good few solid rounds there today, so it's, um, that's everything you want, you know what I mean? You need that high quality sparring or that high intensity sparring. You know, we've had a solid week this week already, and then you're putting that on top of it. So the fitness is only going to just keep going and going and going. Once you get that few days rest in before the fight, boom, you're ready to switch on then, boy. Well, you're switched on as it is, but you know, the, the body's peaking, it's priming then, so. That's the plan, anyway. <laughs> oh, it quickly's rattled. I didn't really speak to him too much when he suffered that loss to Tyriano Johnson. It was so reminiscent of the loss, my first loss against Brian Vera, a fight that I was expected to win. I know what it's like mentally and emotionally. So I just got in touch with him out of the blue and kept, you know, chit chat, a few, few chats on the phone and this and that. And because I felt like he needed some. Confidence, or you know, just needed needed to get it out of your system. So just come down, come down to the gym and just work away, and I'll help. You know, help you out. Never with a view to train him or becoming his coach. And but that's the way. That's the way it happened. Eventually, he said, "I'd like to stay here and train with you." And before I know it, I was training him. And the master tactician, very very clever, reads a fight well. Um, you know, although he's, he's a new trainer, he's been around Tyson Fury. He was in that cronk gym with Emmanuel Stewart. You know, he, learning all the time from people like Stewart and Sugar Hill. We works alongside now with Tyson Fury. You know, that sort of thing, you know, picking up the things he's picked up from them and other people he's worked with already makes him a, a great trainer. What it's going to make him in years to come is one of the greatest trainers. And his career has a lot of similarities to mine. Um, he's walked the same journey and the same path as me in, in a lot of very similar circumstances. There's a lot of fighter-coach relationships out, of, out there where the boxer is, is the boss or is in charge. And I personally don't agree with it. Um, I, I believe that, you know, you do what your coach tells you. Like, I would be mad not to take his advice and not to let him be the boss. And, you know, not to uh, not to listen to what he has to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that's where it all happens. <laughs> so. Be careful with those headshots. <laughs> <laughs> You cook there, watch the TV there, in the bed there, and that's it. Like, and that's all, you don't want nothing too complicated in training camp, you just want the basics. It just helps you get on with things in and focus a lot better. And obviously it's really important for your fighter to be happy. Yeah, um, it's not what he wants, but I want. <laughs> no, <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, 100%. And I want to see, 
um, certain things, and I am, I'm seeing them so far. Since I've went with Andy, you know, he's tested me in certain ways, put certain uh, obstacles and tasks in front of me, and has shown to myself again that, you know, that this is exactly what I want, and this is exactly what I'm going for. The pr like the pressure, the pressure comes from what you think other people expect from you. Yeah. You know, like, but really, I can tell you this now from from the outside. No one, like, no, no one, like your family, April, me. All that's expected of you is to perform at your best, to do your best, and that's all you can do. You know what I mean? So there's no like. That's it. So there's no, there is no pressure. There is no pressure. You know what I mean? And like, like, what's, what's, what's the, what is the worst that can happen? You lose a fight. It's only a, it's only a fight at the end of the day. Come on, it's a fight. Like, you know what I mean? You lose a fight. Yeah. Fight night in Vegas, boys. Quickly versus Mosley Jr. A massive fight for both of their respective careers. Mosley Junior fight was was a really a crossroads fight in my boxing career. Um, I go into to that fight, I won it. Look at me now fighting for a world title. I lose that fight. Where do I go from there? Like, what's next for me? How do you come back from that? You know, you really have to maybe just start all over again and and grind your way back to the top. In the change rooms before that fight was probably the most relaxed I have ever been. And the reason behind that was because I looked at myself, I told myself, this is it, Jason. And I remember the first four or five rounds of that fight, I was in there and you know I was kind of maybe trying a little bit too hard and trying to make things happen. And there was a stage just where I was like, in the middle of the fight, Jason, you're not enjoying this. Just enjoy it. This could be your last ever fight. Get up on your toes, dance around, have fun, enjoy it. Soon as I done that, bang, fight teams. from Jason Quigley. I remember three, four years ago when Boo Boo Andre had, had no promoter. He had no real management going on. He was like, I'll fight this Jason Quigley guy. He didn't even pronounce my second name right. Boo Boo Andre, now you're the champ. You're always crying that you don't have people to fight you. I'm not saying that I'm going to get in there and kick your ass. I'll get in there and put on one hell of a fight with you. I've got a belt. You've got the main one. Give me a crack at that title. My father was uh, by my side for a long, long time. He coached me throughout all my amateur career. But as we all know, father and son relationships can, can knock heads and uh, can go one way or another. Um, I love my father so very much. Um, he's done a lot for me in my life and, and done a lot for me in my, in my boxing career more so. And I'm really grateful and thankful for that. I suppose there's certain elements that me and my father just mightn't be on talking terms from time to time and that can be down to his fault, it can be down to my fault. As of right now there's a lot going on in life and you know I think uh, things are probably better off just the way they are right now but um, yeah definitely down the line hopefully things can maybe rekindle. Just after a nice double espresso coffee there, uh, get the get the kick going, and uh, we're heading out to the gym for uh, first session of the day. It's going to be a technical session today. We're going to be doing a bit of shadow boxing, uh, working, fine tuning the technique and everything now that uh, we're planning on using on Andrade's head.
he goes into the gym, he trains hard, puts in the work and he leaves knowing that he's done everything he can to prepare well. When I first joined Andy, for me to learn of Andy, I was watching a lot of what Jason was doing because they've been working together for a while. Right hand and jab is going to work anyway, even when he's on it. <laughs> right hand jab's going to work every time. Yeah. But he'll always go like this. He'll always step back and then he'll always go like that. And that's the one. Yeah. Keep your chin down. That was your moment. Well, you got to wait for... you got to throw in the right hand. No, there, you're, 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 no, yeah, yeah. you're just going to move, circle, 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 and raid when you see Whenever me. Whenever I see you... Whenever you see me, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Huh? Much better today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the menu today is egg whites. We'll have one full egg. We'll have some uh, turkey bacon. And uh, we'll have a little bit of crisp bread then. A nice romantic meal for one. Bon appetit, hey? He's very strict with his food. He came over the other night. Um, I had a, you know, I had a big rib ribeye, you know, and he had this little, like, you know, like a little, like fillet or whatever he had, you know, and um, and I just like looked at his one and looked at mine, and I was like, yeah, I'm happy that I'm eating this one. I do like to isolate myself and I like to kind of be in my own routine. I work the best without any distractions. I'm probably a very boring person whenever I'm in camp because all I really do is eat, sleep, train. He's uh, independent. He doesn't rely on anyone. He can be by himself and he can be very happy, but he works very hard. Whenever I get into camp, my heart rate will drop down to low 40s. There's times I could sit, look at my heart rate, and it could be sitting 35, 37, 38. You know, this is when you're peaking. Oh, he sent me one of his J.I.'s face on. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Markham's done, finished, out of the way. Uh, we're on to the, the last phase now of uh, the prep of the camp, and that is uh, flight to Boston tomorrow morning and get ready to take care of business over in Boston then, so uh, looking forward to it. First of all, I'd like to thank Jason Quigley for having the guts to take this fight. Because nobody in the United States wants to fight Demetrius Andre. Don't miss it. This will be home field advantage. But for Jason Quigley, the Irish will be here on Friday night. I'm a young, hungry fighter looking to become a world champion. Demetrius is a world champion. and. Uh... I'm really looking forward to an opportunity to fight him for that world title. I give Jason quickly, you know, the most respect for, you know, stepping up to the plate and taking on his challenge. And at the end of the day, may the best man win. Unfortunately, it's me. This is the, this is Uncle Pete here. This is the Godfather of Donegal. No, no messing with this boy right here. This is the biggest fight in the history of Donegal boxing for Jason Quigley and for boxing itself. Like, if there doesn't come any bigger, you know, and hopefully he can do it on the night. Listen, I don't give a f what anybody's saying. At the end of the day, I step into that ring and I win every single time with whatever it takes to win. That's what matters. Jason Quigley's to somebody. Canelo wanted to fight him at one point. He's 19 to one, whatever the situation is. I'm fighting another human being with a will, with coverage. I'm not just fighting somebody I can just be like, Ow. The thing about Demetrius that's so interesting is no one will fight him. I mean, 
Jason had other opportunities for fights, and he said he wanted to fight for the world title. He potentially could have gotten more money fighting other people, but he wanted to fight Andrade. Andrade is a, is a very, very good world champion. There's a reason why Canelo doesn't want to go near him. There's a reason why Jamal Charlo doesn't seem to want to go near him. He's got so much talent, but we only see glimpses of it. Andy Lee know that, and how do they negate that? that that's a big factor. That was good, Daryl, wasn't it? Uh, fine, yeah. Enjoy that. Very good. And how has hat? Uh, it's good just to get, this the first time getting a look at him too. Like, you know, yeah, just, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. It's not uh, just, thing, just see, him, <laughs> see what it's all about. I think it's going to be a long, long time. We're there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do me? so they can face the scale and face each other. Please welcome the challenger, Jason Quigley. I felt a little bit more intense with the weigh-in. I felt like it was, you know, right, it's getting close now. We're not friends here. I almost cried yesterday, and I am not kidding. Here we have a world champion in their backyard, and when Jason Quigley's name's announced, the place explodes. And when the champ's name's announced, maybe you heard a clap or two. Demetrius Boo Boo Andre. To travel from, from Ireland, it just, it really, it made, it made my heart warm, because I know it meant a lot to Jason. Brilliant experience, like geez, just to have everyone there from back home do something else. We're the whole way over here on the east coast of America, fighting a guy that lives only an hour away, but we have the home support. He sacrificed so much, and there's so much behind the scenes. That's what Jason dedicated his whole life to. He deserves it, like. It's been a long journey for everybody who's close to Jason. And it would mean so much to everybody, like April, like the people who've been closest to him, just because it'll be something that he's always strived for and he know that he's worked hard for and he's reached the pinnacle of what he wants. He just thinks something you just can't teach a fighter and Jason hasn't. It's, it's really, that's really, really hard. Surprisingly hard. He will have the fan support, the family, the love, uh, even though we are practically in Demetrius' backyard. This is his D-Day tonight. This is a big one here tonight. The game plan Jason has, if he can fight to it, I think he'll beat Andrade. Perfect. Jason's going to win and become the new champion of the world. I've been through too much to let this slip. Morning of the fight now. We're here with the, with the team. Just had a nice breakfast, feeling good, feeling great. Ready to put on a show tonight around great people, couldn't get it. Even though 
this was the biggest fight of my career. It was probably one of the most relaxed I've ever been. I'm at a stage where it's, it's just another fight. We're listening to music, we're singing songs, we're having the crack in the change rooms. But we were focused, we were switched on, we knew the job we had at hand and we knew when to turn that switch and when to be like, right, it's game time now. That's the heavy one, man. It's the heavy one. On this side. Yeah. Yes. It's staying right here. Yes. Three, two. Jason, you've been asked all week long, how do you defeat Demetri Sandra? We're going to go in there, try to execute our game plan to the best of our ability. I believe I do that. I come away world champion. Of course, there's a little bit of nerves once they say, Right, you have 30 minutes, start getting the gloves on. Like that's when that's when it hits and you're like boom. Right. Let's switch on here. Right? There's a job to do. Guys, it's over. Okay. It's over. Jason Quigley. He believes he can win, gentlemen. He's not here to take part. He's here to take over. And the Irish have taken over this arena in New Hampshire. Not much is expected from Jason Quigley. Everything is expected from Demetrius Andre. Will he deliver a knockout as promised? Or will it be another dominating points decision? Quigley. A massive underdog, but with the opportunity of a lifetime. I already see some foot feints and some good upper body movement from Quigley. So already see a little bit of a difference in his last fight with Mosley when he was more stiff. Good start for Quigley. I felt amazing in there. I felt like as like soon as I got in there and the two was squared off, the jab to the body, there was a few attacks, there was a few feints. I took the center of the ring. I was like, this is going to be a good fight. He quickly's rattled early. Big right hook by Andre. That rock Coming quickly. again, and he's down in round one. And the first round was where I broke the jaw. I went into the corner after the first round, and I, I put my tongue in around my teeth. I thought my teeth were knocked out or something. I, and there's lumps of blood just coming out of my mouth. I was like, what the hell's going on? I must have a tooth knocked out or something like that. And then I went out in the second round and did what I had to do, but wasn't good enough. A brilliant start here for the champ. What a well-timed left hand by Demetrius Andre. From getting hit to being on my knees and the referee saying three and four, I don't remember anything. But as soon as the referee went three, four, I was like, I'm on the deck. But I was fine. I fixed my shorts. I was like, right, let's regroup and get up. I got up on my feet and I was like, I'm fine. Like. Quigley is tough, no doubt about it. And he might get dropped again here in the corner and he goes down for a third time. And they waved it off. Demetrius Boo Boo Andre, he delivered. I got dropped again. I wasn't hurt. He did catch me, but I wasn't like, wobbled or hurt. It was very messy kind of knockdowns apart from the first one. When the referee waved it off, I was like, what are you doing? Like, I'm fine. I says to the referee, goes, I'm fine. Like, what are you doing? He goes, another time, another time. I was like, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. Like, I'm not hurt. Obviously, it's over. Nothing you can do then, like, you know what I mean? But I knew there was definitely something there that was wrong. I 
I just didn't get to, didn't get to show my worth and uh, it frustrates me and it annoys me. It's just something that I hope doesn't haunt me. Even in the changing rooms after the fight, the only reason I asked for the doctor was because the blood wouldn't stop coming out of my mouth. He shone the light in to, and there was a big massive slice in the back of my gum and the blood was just oozing out of me. Like every time I spat it was just dark red blood. And he says, look, maybe get an x-ray. Went to Sligo by the specialist, did a more detailed scan, found out that there was a break here and a break there. Got into Derry, got surgery done. And then the few days after is when everything quieted down and I probably had a bit of bad form. Just being down, like, you know, because, all right, I'm taking it, I was beat and wasn't happy at all with the way the fight went, like, not what I wanted whatsoever. But then I had this broken jaw that I could barely speak, I could barely brush my teeth, can't eat, soups, porridge is about the height of it, like. Ten years of age. In the middle of this floor here, I had my first ever fight when I was ten years of age. And from that there fight to my world title fight, everything was geared towards there. Like, and then you go in there and it's all over in two rounds. Like, it's it's devastating. Like, it really is. Mother passed away. People, some people had called you, that kind of thing. And Jason was the first one to want to meet me in Harold's Cross for a coffee. And that, that means a lot at that time. Whatever life throws at him, he just takes it as it is. And he sees the best in things and he sees the best in people. It's, it's just he has a, a great way about him. There's so much that young fella's given up and, you know, missed out on everything, like. And that's why you want him to. He deserves it, like. Ireland is starving, thirsty for a world champion and who better than a Jason Quigley who who everybody loves. Jason doesn't need boxing. Jason can be successful in whatever he chooses to do. Um, obviously he's good looking with a great personality and at the top level of, of his game. I see what, what I've always seen in Jason Quigley, a winner inside the ring and outside the ring. He can be successful at whatever he wants to be because he will make himself a success. There's days I'm like, I'm never getting into a box ring again. Then there's days I'm like, I'm not getting out of the sport like this. Didn't just get beat. I got stopped in the second round, broke my jaw in the biggest fight of my life that I felt great for, that I had an amazing training camp for. I was in the shape of my life, everything went brilliant. And then that goes and happens to me and then it's like, well, what's the point? Like, That shouldn't be his last attempt at a world title. He's devoted his life to it and I don't think he should walk away at the stage. Absolutely not, there's plenty more left in him. He was just unfortunate to that night. And if you just put it on me now and say, what do you want to do? Like, I'm probably guarantee I'm not walking away right now. I do believe that this is definitely not the end, and I do believe that I can become a world champion. I'm not an expert, but I know enough to know that he can get back to world level again. One of my main goals in life is if I can change somebody's life in a positive way, if I can help someone get out of sadness, depression, anxiety and dark times into brighter, happier, positive, joyful times, just one person I've succeeded in life. You're lifting the heels like you don't have the heels stuck on the ground, you're not down in the dumps, you're nothing like that. You're lifting the heels, you're getting on with things and you're enjoying life as much as you can. Early mornings, late nights, once the pet of time can reach a great height. Strength is in the mind, it's what can make fights. Blessings in my life are what I make right. Grinding till it pays right. Can't deny the time I give to make mine. I've been living like I'm in a grave site. Every day digging deep, trying to live a great life. Inspiring others cause I never quit. If you give up, you will never last. 
time to put a stop 